What's going on everybody? We have the meta snapshot for patch 13.10 week 2 and this is a big one because the world championships are going to be played this weekend so definitely stay tuned for that and let me know who you are rooting for in the comments but but me and Voidsin have compiled the best comps for this patch if you want to do some last minute climbing right before set 9 comes out and we've made a couple of adjustments just for that. So starting off in the S tier we have the Infinity Teams, Laser Core, Jin, 4 Ace Mech, that's a new comp, and then Spell Slingers. This comp definitely came alive because of the augment changes, and it's much easier to get now. Into the A tier we have Threat, Star Guardian Kai'Sa, Nar Reroll, Mech Sure Shot, Duelist, Anima Misfortune, Built Different, Ash Reroll, Mascot Vex, Lulu Reroll, and Yasuo. And then in the B tier we have Hearts, Ezreal Reroll, another new comp, Jax, Lucian, Jinx, Draven, and then LeBlanc. So let's go into how to play these comps, and I'm gonna skip over some of the ones that we've went over already throughout the set, or just do a brief summary of them, and then I'll go more in depth on the new comps. Let's start off with the best comp though, Infinity Team Sure Shots. So AD comps are very popular right now. Samira is probably one of the more popular carries. She fits in like both mech builds and the Infinity Team build, and just all around very, very solid. Gonna be the primary four cost carry for a lot of teams, Garen being the primary main tank. But this comp is reliant on the plus one augment, so definitely keep that in mind as you are playing. You want to do a fast eight with this comp, but if you want more in-depth details on this, definitely check out some of the previous meta snapshots because we've been over this a lot before throughout the set. Next comp up, same thing, laser core, very reliant on one of the plus one augments. However, once you get it, probably one of the strongest comps in the game, especially at six laser core, assuming you hit the Mordekaiser. You really like tanky items in this build because you want your units to live as long as possible to get more and more laser core procs. And this comp also fits within the fast 8 leveling pattern. Next comp up we have Jin Renegades, also another fast 8 comp, except this time you're not as reliant on the plus 1 trait augments. More of the power comes from the actual units such as Jin and Viego, so you're not as reliant on getting like more and more of the trait bonuses, because the units themselves do just a lot of work. You cap this out with a lot of different legendaries, Fiddle 6 and Leona being the two preferred ones, but you could use almost any of them. Obviously Leona is good for the 5 Renegade, but if you don't get her, you could replace her and Camille with other units such as threat units, or just really anything that you have 2 star upgraded. Let's say you're facing a lot of magic damage, you're playing the Alistair already, so you could run an Echo to give you more Aegis, or you could run maybe like a Ramus if people have a lot of physical damage. So let's move on into the new comp for Ace Mech. So this build, very similar to the other mech build, however, instead of relying on Samira carry, you're doing Samira and Misfortune carry. Misfortune is actually the preferred one in four aces because she makes much better use of the ace buff than Samira, but both of them are good. You want to itemize both at the end of the day. The mech portion is really nice because Draven is also an ace and a mech, so you definitely want to run him. He combines into the big mech in the middle with Garen, and then focus a lot on the tank items on Garen because same principles for the other mech build apply. You want to focus more on your defensive items rather than the offensive items because the mech is just that big of a component of your team. You may have noticed this comp doesn't require that many units. We have Wukong, Garen, Mordekaiser, Samira, Draven, and Misfortune. That's only six units, so you have two flex spots. You could run like four defender if you want. You could run the threat units as you see here, Urgot and Fiddle. If you don't have resistance penetration, you could run like a Morgana. Lots and lots and lots of different things you can try to run. It's definitely a really flexible comp, so do keep that in mind as you're playing that because you need to mix and match all the other units. The only hard part about this is getting four aces, so how do you do that? Well, ace in the whole augment is one way to do that very easily, uh, but apart from that, you just have to pray that you hit a Mordekaiser, similar to when you're playing Laser Core. Laser Core, you're praying you're hitting Mordekaiser. This one's the same thing, except the power spike that you get from the fourth Mordekaiser. Super duper 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 strong, because it literally unlocks the four ace trait. So uh, that's critical, like huge critical. And if you hit it, you hit it. If you don't, it's not the end of the world, but it's still pretty nice. Uh, as for augments, like high-end shopping, it's extremely good. Let's actually look in here a little bit more. High-end shopping, really good. Level up, really good, because you're going for a lot of expensive units. That's why those are preferred. Stuff that buffs both Samira and Misfortune, such as uh, Jeweled Gauntlet, really strong. And then Second Wind is incredibly good for the mech, because Second Wind really works well if you're able to get the full health value from it. So if you have one big tank, they're more likely to get the full health value from it. Uh, whereas if you have a lot of mini tanks, some of them might die before second win actually triggers. So do keep that in mind as you're running that augment. But that's going to be pretty much it for the augments. For items, Last Whisper, mandatory on Samira. Uh, Shojin, very, very, very good on Misfortune. So 
you definitely need those if you want to play this. So one tricky part is trying to transition into the comp. We have a write up here, buddymuffins.lol slash meta. Go on over to the 4A section, but we'll cover a little bit of the basics right now. So you have to decide whether you want to play AD or AP. I prefer the AP Misfortune line and then use an early game item holder for those items. So if you have like a two star, let's say a two star vein, for example, like maybe you want to use more so the Samira build. If you have like a two star Vex holding stuff, then maybe lean more towards the Misfortune. However, if I had to choose in a perfect world, I like Misfortune more, but Void Sin likes AD. I think both work. I think AP has a better late game, but AD it's like easier to transition into. And then your front line is just defenders into Garen. By the way, it is Void Sin's birthday this weekend, so do send him some wishes, maybe in the comments or like DM him or something like that, or sign up for his coaching. Uh, I believe the coaching section is down here. You just click there. Uh, there's like a tab on the top too, and you could just like um, hit him up for um, either a coaching session or just wish him a happy birthday. But let's go on into the next comp, which is Ox for Spell Slingers. This comp is just a tried and true comp throughout the entire set. Uh, fast 8 with this, play around Twisted Fate or Nico. Twisted Fate is definitely preferred with a static shiv. Uh, that's why the item's a little bit highlighted. And that's pretty much going to be it. We've gone over that comp a bunch before. Into the A tier, we have the Threat comp. This can be played both with the Threat front line or the Mech front line. Uh, pretty much same thing here. You'd play it in the same exact way you'd play Mech Sure Shot, except you itemize your Asol or Belveth if you hit them two star. And it's kind of like a second choice. You also fast state with this one. Star Guardian Kaisa gonna be a reroll comp. Static Shiv gonna be the best item for your Kaisa. And then I like pairing it up with two more damage items. Some people like the Hextech Gunblade. I think it's a little overrated. Not that it's bad, it's just overrated. I prefer just going full damage on her. And then if you do hit the jackpot, you get the Star Guardian Crest. Put that over onto your Misfortune because she is going to pop off on everyone with that. Uh, you know how there's the augment like make it rain with Misfortune? Well, she actually makes it rain with like her bullets if you get the Star Guardian Crest on her. Uh, next comp up, we have Nar Gadgetine, another reroll comp. So this comp, we moved it up a little bit from last week. It's one of those like really hit or miss comps. It's either like really, really good or really, really bad. It depends if you hit five Gadgetine or not. If there's a way to hit five Gadgetine, like obviously it's gonna be incredibly powerful, but it doesn't happen all the time. So just be careful whenever you play this. Just know that you might need a little bit of luck because you cannot, cannot, cannot get the Gadgetine augment early on in the game anymore. It only appears on stage four. And that's the same thing with Nunu. Nunu pretty much only appears on like stage four or five. So you kind of have to pray that you hit it. Uh, we go through a lot of the leveling patterns in the how to play section down here. So definitely check that out. Uh, but just one other thing to note, uh, we have in the items for Nar down here, Last Whisper is recommended, but in the picture, we do not have a Last Whisper. The reason why that happens is because Morgana is kind of like your fake Last Whisper or your like Last Whisper replacement. So if you run Morgana, do not build Last Whisper on Nar. But if you, for some reason, do not play Morgana, then you need the Last Whisper on Nar. So that's just like a little tip there. Uh, next up we have is the Mech Sure Shot. Mech Sure Shot plays in the same way as the other mech build with the aces, except this is much more consistent because you don't need to hit four aces. You can just have one ace. That's a lot easier to do. So you just play around your Samira and then you go into other Sure Shots later on with the Ezreal. The only issue with this comp is that the Samira and Ezreal are both highly contested. So you want to be very, very careful when going for this because uh, you might not hit the units that you want. So make sure when you go for this that you either have like a very powerful start for it so you could survive no matter who contests you or make sure it's uncontested, one of the two. Uh, but just fast eight leveling pattern or standard leveling, uh, whichever one you're allowed to do that game. Duelist is a little funky. This is a very fast type of comp. You like ramp up really quickly and then you hopefully destroy everyone in the mid to late game because as you may notice here, it's not really a reroll comp. I know we notify that there's like a three star Vayne and three star Nyla, but it's really not a reroll comp. It's more so just like a trait comp and you just beat people in stage three and stage four. And then after that, you kind of slowly bleed out, get a fourth place. It's not that that's good. It's not that that's bad. It's just how it is. But just keep in mind, whenever you play Duelist, you have to play with that goal in mind. So definitely try to spike in the mid game to do that. You roll at stage three, two sometimes. So at level six, sometimes you roll at stage four, one at level seven, because you really need to make sure that you win those rounds in stage three and stage four. If not, you will get outscaled by other teams. Uh, there's just no getting around that. Uh, next up we have is the Anima Misfortune comp. So I did like a three hour video on Anima Misfortune. So definitely check that out no matter what level you are. I go through games that are between iron and diamond, but it really works at like any level. 
You just need to know how to play the comp. And we pretty much go over all the ins and outs in that video. So definitely check that out. But you do standard leveling pattern. You only want to do this with a very strong anima squad start and then itemize your Misfortune and your Riven or a Legendary. So if Riven gets a three star, sometimes that happens, you wanna itemize your Riven. If not, Echo or Garen could be your main tanks or maybe like a Legendary unit can be your main tank. Uh, but that's pretty much all there is for this comp. Let's move on to Build Different. Only play this with the Build Different Augment. Do a Fast State Strategy or Standard Leveling and make sure to run duplicate copies of different champions. Again, one of the troubles with Build Different is that Samira's another one of the primary carries, which could be a little tricky because Samira's being taken by a lot of different teams. So you could play Jin instead, but it's just not as strong as the Samira. Next comp up we have is the Ash reroll. So only do this with the Ash carry augment if you get that at stage two, and then run Blitzcrank as your main tank. It's a pretty solid build. It's not gonna do anything super crazy, but it gives you a lot of top fours with a chance of getting top one if you get something crazy like five or six laser core. Oh, and this is a one cost reroll comp, so do not level up in the early game. And then on stage 3 1, roll to 30 gold in order to find copies of Ash, Blitzcrank, and Renekton. And then after that, go back up to 50, then slow roll at level 5 until you hit Ash 3, and then power level after that to add in other units. Vex reroll is going to be the next comp we're going to go over. This is just like a heavy mascot build. And in the mid game, you play supers, but then after that, once you can fit six mascots in, you swap the supers out for the mascots. But if you manage to get three star supers, you could just keep them in the game. The only important item in this build is going to be the blue buff on Vex. After that, just go pure tank items on your Malphite and add any other ability power items on Vex. Archangels is definitely preferred because the fights last a really long time. But if you don't have that, don't like sweat over it as long as you have two other decent damage items. This is a two and three cost reroll comp, so there's a very specific leveling pattern that you should read about over here uh, on the website bunnymuffins.lol slash meta. So definitely check that out if you want more details if you're going for that comp. Lulu reroll is going to be the next comp. This is kind of like the hearts reroll build, except it focuses more on Lulu with the Lulu carry augment uh, or like the Pantheon ones. Both of those are pretty solid. You just need to make sure that you get the augments, but you also need to have a bunch of copies of the comp. So always keep that in mind whenever you're playing this. Uh, don't just like force it without the augments. And also don't just like go for it if you see the augments, but you don't have any Lulus or Pantheons. Next build up we have is Yasuo Reroll. This is just like the same exact duelist build, except you run three supers. You want to get all your two cost units to three star and then have them hopefully carry the game. Most important item on Yasuo is going to be the Quicksilver and then two damage items. But you could also replace the Quicksilver with something like an Edge of Knight. You just need Yasuo to somehow survive and you prefer one healing item on him. Either like a Hand of Justice, Bloodthirster, or even a Hextech Gunblade. Next build up we have is the B tier in the Hearts Reroll. Hearts Reroll, still solid, nothing crazy. A lot of people have been commenting about the Hearts build because we've left it in the B tier for like a couple weeks now and they're like saying like, hey, it's really good. And I'm not saying it's bad. Just because you're in the B tier doesn't mean it's bad, doesn't mean you can't win. It just means it's a lot less consistent than everything else. So that's why it's kind of here. Next build up we have is Ezreal Reroll. This is kind of like a new comp. And this comp is like kind of one of those like lucky builds and you want to hit the three star. So it's like the supers and Ezreal and Vi. The good news about this is that you can play undergrounds at the start of the game because both Ezreal and Vi are underground. So you just add one more and then you kind of just use that to kind of build up your econ. After that, you just do slow rolling at level six for both Ezreal and Vi, hit them to three star, preferably also Lee Sin and Malphite. That doesn't always happen, but hopefully it does for you. So of course, a lot of the reroll augments are gonna be very powerful, such as Golden Ticket, probably the best augment in the game for them. And then think fast because it's gonna get you a lot of free three stars. Uh, for the tier twos, a lot of the combat ones are really good, such as like Jeweled Lotus, uh, Axiom Mark is really good. Throw the Hunt's pretty good too. And you also want to run like as many quick draws as you can to buff up your Ezreal because he should be one tapping people. And then also only do this with a carry Ezreal or carry via augment uh, because that's really where a lot of the power comes from. Uh, but again, read the rest of the notes if you want in your free time. Jax, Jax reroll is going to be a little bit weaker right now. They've been trying to buff it over and over, but it just hasn't really worked out. Turns out if you take out Sejuani, because they removed Sejuani from the game, and they replaced her with the damage unit, going for some of the other damage carries in the same trait, such as Brawler, so going for Jax, is going to, of course, be a little bit weaker, because you just have one less tank than you did before, and that's why it's kind of weak right now. But you just do a three-cost reroll leveling pattern 
and you should be good to go after that. Lucian reroll, only go for this with a support Lucian augment, or if you just have a ton of Lucians that it just doesn't really matter, and then you just follow a one cost reroll type of strategy. Uh, after that, Jinx reroll, two cost reroll, but you pretty much just play regular Anima Squad with this, and then just itemize your Jinx instead of your Misfortune, and then maybe you three star Riven if you get a lot of copies as you're rolling down. After that, we have Draven reroll. Draven reroll, definitely much weaker than a lot of the other two cost reroll comps. Uh, I think like there aren't that many two cost rerolls right now, which is that sad or is that good? I'm not really sure. It's probably like something in between. But you could run it with Hacker or Super. Both builds work. It just depends on what you're getting that game. After that, we have the LeBlanc Hacker build. Uh, this build's just in the C tier. Don't really pay too much attention to it. I have played it one or two times since it got like super nerfed. It's not bad. It's just not good. Uh, I pretty much started the game with a LeBlanc 2 star. That's the only reason why I kind of went for it. Uh, but it is possible to do it. Uh, for the items, the items are the same as last week pretty much. Bow and sword are just the best because all the good comps in the game right now are attack damage comps. So there's really not too much to like think about whenever you sort of go for your first item off the carousel. Tier is decent because it builds like some of the secondary comps such as like Spell Slingers, Kai'Sa, Anima Squad, things like that. But your bread and butter is going to be the bow and the sword for sure on this patch. Uh, but that's going to be it today. The tip of the day or like the fun fact of the day is that you really should be following the augment guide because the four ace mech build is very, very powerful. And then the ace in the hole augment, the prismatic, if you go up here, tier list and then augments, it is by far the best augment in the prismatic augments right now. And you pretty much always take it. It is a little rare to show up, but it's just by far one of the best augments. And also check out some of the other stuff at if you're on here as well. I update this once every patch. Uh, but that's going to be it from me today. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all later. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gain before the next video.